Hey everyone, welcome to the Von Cash Show. Today I have a guest with me. She's a designer slash illustrator. I had no idea how good of a designer slash illustrator she was until I ran into her second Instagram account, which displays all of her artwork. Without further ado, hi everyone, this is Jasmine. Hi, <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh yeah, of course, no problem. Uh, last time I saw Jasmine, we were in the Oviat Library lawn where we graduated in May. Um, how was life after college? Um, it's been a mix of busy and relaxed because um, we graduated in May, yeah. but then so June was all preparation for um, a convention in July called Anime Expo. You probably mm-hmm. already know about it. I've heard of it. Yeah, so I was using all of June to prepare for that because I thought that I would be able to prepare some stuff during May or even before, but mm-hmm. I procrastinate even with my art, so yeah. I didn't, I was like hustling that month just to make things happen on July 1st to 4th, which is the days of the convention. Mm-hmm. And then um, after that, well, right now, um, I'm still a little busy getting, I'm fortunate enough very fortunate enough to work on commissions Mm -hmm. thank you to everyone who's commissioning me but um other than that my my grandpa's actually here from japan wow (laughs) so yeah so i'm just trying to spend time with him right now and then trying to relax before grad school grad school where are you going to grad school I'm going to UCLA. Whoa, okay. yeah. um, going there for education. There's okay. this program called TEP, Teachers Education Program, mm-hmm. and they have a they have an ethnic studies focus group. So um, I applied there, got in, and nice. they don't start until late September. So I'm just kind of waiting until that starts. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so when did you get into drawing? That's a question I have a hard time answering because I don't really have a time that I specifically was like, oh, like I started Mm -hmm. drawing because you know how when like kids just draw and color for fun? Mm -hmm. For me, it's like that just never ended. So I just kind of like always kept drawing during my free time. Mm And it just kind of never left me. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel. So I feel like I've been drawing like all my life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I used to draw when I was younger. I was be that kid that always doodled on homework <laughs> and um, books. And I get in trouble for it. It's not art class, it's a <laughs> science class. Um, stuff I draw were like, you know, the Dragon Ball Zs, that kind of stuff. I yeah, tried to draw stuff. the whole manga stuff and I don't know I never saw myself <coughs> really progressing much um, I'd always find myself like rushing and everything but that's cool that you kept up with it thanks yeah I mean I don't know like I've always just had fun with it so it's for me like I've just always been just investing in my hobby and it's not really like oh it's a job mm. just cause um, I self started this whole thing really like um, going to conventions and tabling there and selling my stuff like that's all stuff I decided to do on my own and it is stressful but um, during the convention when people buy your stuff it's it feels so amazing yeah yeah I don't even know how to explain it because the very first year I was like no one's gonna buy my stuff mm. no one like I'm gonna do real bad yeah then people were like oh like can I get this and that like that made me happy and this um i know like it might sound a little cheesy but um like it really isn't like about the money at that point like even if i sold like a a one dollar like button like Mm -hmm. i was like oh my goodness like thank you thank you so much it's not cheesy at all so it makes me really really happy so even though i get really stressed it's really it's all really worth it in the end that's cool it's great that you can make an income off of your art i think that's what all art creative individuals kind of strive to do i mean i know it's not about just the money but where you can like make monetary gain monetary gains off of that it's pretty yeah i never i never imagined myself to get that far because Mm -hmm. it was always like 
when I was little and I would draw people and be like, oh, maybe you could like sell it in the future. And I'm, mm-hmm. and then I would always be like, no, nah, no, that can't really happen. Yeah. So for me to get this far, it really does make me happy. It's not necessarily like a stable or like a huge income, but regardless, like having people even like commission me and like buy my stuff, um, it really, like it's really something I never pictured, but maybe at the same time like I was like oh I'm gonna try to do that so mm-hmm. it's one of those like going big type of thing for me to yeah. try to sell and put my stuff like out there for other people to see too right. like it's not just my friends saying like mm-hmm. oh that's cool yeah. like but and like that already made me happy so mm-hmm. then like having strangers tell me like oh like I like your stuff mm-hmm. that's like that's like a whole nother level of amazing yeah, and I think now with today's technology, the smartphones and Instagram and social media, you can do that a lot easier. Yeah, um, yeah, like advertising, like um, even if I don't have something that's completely like clean um, mm-hmm. enough to make into a print to sell, like I could still post like sketches, right. see how, like just show everyone like how things look like when they're in the making or even when I like doodle something like I can it's really easy for me to like be engaged and like still keep in touch with everyone and Mm -hmm. it's also a good way to keep in touch with the other artists that I meet at con so it's really really helpful and um it makes yeah it makes um being intimate with whoever that talks to you um easier because you don't just see them once a year at a convention you get to talk to them from time to time see how they're doing Mm -hmm. so yeah i and um a lot of people are like oh like are you on facebook are you on this but for now i'm just only on instagram for whatever Mm -hmm. reason i don't know why but it just seems to work for me like i I don't know if how it is for you i I think as a visual artist instagram is your number one platform Mm -hmm. right i I don't really need like a Facebook. I mean, I guess you could have a Facebook page, but Instagram is just right there. They look, they click on your your name, and they see all the pictures right there. Yeah, like they it's straightforward. And, I mean, yeah. all the power to people who use Facebook. <laughs> oh yeah, but definitely. Yeah, I'm just like never on there, so I guess that's why I never even thought about it until someone's like, "Oh, do you have a Facebook page?" Because you know, other artists they have a Facebook page and upload their stuff there too. But I'm just like, wow, I never, I honestly never thought of that. I've only been on Instagram you know whatever works so can you describe um, like what type of illustrations you do Um, so this is like it's weeby but I just do a lot of fan art Uh Um, and I do some originals but um, recently just because it's been like convention season I haven't really done like original or personal work Mm -hmm. um i don't know if this necessarily counts as like artwork but for me like personally i do a lot of like planner decoration too so that's probably like something that's not like fan arty that Mm -hmm. i do but otherwise it's all like digital artwork of print and then i make buttons from them postcards trying to make um oh and i make keychains I'm trying to expand and try to make different things. Like right now, um, I'm trying to make washi tape because mm-hmm. I really like washi tape myself. For what's, the, what's washi tape? Yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know what washi tape is, it's um, it's basically just really cute decorative tape. Mm-hmm. So it's just um, tape with patterns on them. Um, it's called washi. I don't know if a lot of people know, but washi is actually um, a type of Japanese paper. Mm-hmm. It's really thin. Um, but also really durable Mm -hmm. so um, that's washi and then originally um, Japan made uh, tape using that paper so that's why um, people are that's why it's called washi tape Mm -hmm. but now like it's just like a general term for you know decorative tape so I collect a bunch of those it's really unhealthy (laughs) No, it's cool I think I saw some of your washi tape in um, 350. Yeah, I like would bring them with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember that. Um, so, what is exactly fan art? Do, do fans request you do a certain piece? Is that what it is? Um, it's both. Um, so when people request me, then that would just be considered that would be considered commissions. Mm-hmm. But um, well, like the good thing about this is that. 
I get to draw whatever I want, like uh, mm-hmm. whatever series I really like. Yeah. So um, it's just um, my own rendition of characters that are already out there, especially okay. in like anime, um, sometimes cartoon, but mm-hmm. don't really do that. I'm more of a watcher than just drawing cartoons. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so it's just drawing already existing characters, but kind of having your take on it. Okay. And um, I guess the part about fan art that's really great is that you get to create something that you don't really get to see in like official art mm-hmm. or whatever happens in like the actual episodes. And if there's something that you want to see happen, then mm-hmm. basically you can make it happen. So I think that's a really great part about fan art because then. Um, if say like a series ended and you're really sad and like you want to experience more of like how the world how that like world is or like you want to see more of the characters but there's really no other way because you know nothing's basically in production Mm -hmm. i think that i think that fan art helps because then like people make content for each other and that you get to like experience and like be immersed in whatever world or character of a series for a little longer Mm -hmm. and you know you get to see what you don't you didn't get to see so I think that I think that fan art's really like it's more than just like oh my god I love this series I'm just gonna draw it like I think it's like a nice thing for um, people to see or come across Mm -hmm. cool very interesting I had no idea but that's all it's really interesting Um, fan art where you make your own rendition of original characters um so so you do draw what can you take us through your drawing slash coloring process like do you draw all of it by hand and then take pictures or you also use a computer so again i'm i'm like really mixed because Mm -hmm. it really depends on how i feel like um most of the stuff that i do put out there like in terms of like products they're Mm -hmm. all digital always always digital because um, uh, I don't really have like a high quality camera, so mm-hmm. or like a big like industry level scanner, mm-hmm. so I can't um, scan things or take pictures of things in like high mm-hmm. res to make them into prints. Mm-hmm. Because, but um, um, so it's always digital. But whenever like if it's like on my Instagram or if it's on my personal time, I actually love traditional. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it really gets me late. Like I, sometimes I'm so lazy to set up my tablet mm-hmm. and like um, set up my file dimensions for mm-hmm. the, like a digital like work that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So sometimes traditional is just really easy to do. But when I do digital. Um, there's two ways I go about it. It's either I do everything like from scratch on digital, like I do the sketch on there, and then I also do line and everything on there, uh, like on digital, mm. or um, I sketch it out on regular paper, and then I scan it or take a picture, and then I trace over the lines, and then I start coloring from there. Mm-hmm. And then um, scanning just for like sketches, that's okay, because you know, like in the end, I'm not gonna use the sketches. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so yeah, it's either I do everything, everything on digital, or I at least sketch on paper and then I color and line from there. And I usually, recently I've been doing that more just because I kind of missed working on, working directly on paper. Mm -hmm. So then I'm just, recently I've actually, I've gotten more, I got more art supplies, traditional art supplies like paint and um, these um, art markers called Copic markers. They're like coloring markers that like manga artists use. But I did, yeah, so I've been like buying those just so I have more reason to color and do everything like traditionally. Mm Um, but that's really pers- that's like just like a personal thing for me. Yeah, but usually everything's everything's always digital. What's what do you think is easier for you? Digital or traditional? Um in terms of setting it up, I don't know why, even though it's just plugging my tablet into the USB cable, mm-hmm. I get so lazy. And for me, like whipping out a pencil and a <coughs> sketchbook is much easier. So I do, I think I prefer traditional right now. Mm-hmm. But each, um, each method has its own, uh, its own like, pros and cons. yeah, it has its own pros and cons. So yeah, for me, like, it's all really feeling. I know it's, it's kind of vague, no, but 
yeah, it's all really feeling. It just depends if I if I feel like I want something clean and like something that I can like possibly put up online or mm-hmm. make into prints, then I'm like, oh, maybe I should do digital. And oh, and like when I do streams, I um, when you I do streams, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, not right. recently, okay, but you gotta check these out. <laughs> yeah, um, I always just stream on Twitch and then oh, you're on Twitch yeah. too. Okay. Yeah, I've heard like other web, like I've heard other services for streaming, but right now, um, I, it's Twitch seems to be working for me, and I'm really getting used to it still but yeah so when i want to stream it's always digital as well so um even if it's like a doodle or whatever it's Mm -hmm. just digital yeah well i guess the cool thing about digital is uh you don't see the erasure marks over time because when Mm -hmm. i used to draw sometimes when i have a really bad drawing session i keep erasing over time on your piece of paper you can see yeah like you 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 can like rip your paper (laughs) yeah Exactly. Yeah. Um, oh, well, another thing I do, like, um, to draw, like, when I do something digitally, um, say, like, I sketch something, but it's, like, really out of proportion or, like, mm-hmm. really bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I fix the sketch itself on the computer. I use a program called Sci. A lot of people usually hear, like, Photoshop, but um, um, I go with Sci. Sci is... Um, Sai is a program that's made like to draw digitally because Photoshop it does the job but um, in the end it's meant more for photographs like in mm-hmm. photo editing so um, Sai is like completely for um, digital illustration right. so I mean Photoshop like now like they have more features catered to drawing too but Sai um, it's really minimal but it just has like just the right stuff that you need Mm-hmm. I still do have Photoshop because I do like touch ups and um, side doesn't have text. So mm-hmm. if I do need text, then I would use Photoshop. So I still I still need both of them, but right. most of the drawing happens on a program called Sai. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, are there any particular characters you gravitate towards drawing? Mm, right now, right now, there's a series called Boku no Hero Academia. If you've heard of it, I watched um, a couple episodes. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, really, <coughs> any characters in there because mm-hmm. I'm really, really into that series right now. So that's what I like. Like, mm-hmm. I'm really into it. I could just draw it, and that's like my main drive. So um, it's really hard to like. So sometimes the hard part is if someone commissions you something because you don't get to choose what you want to draw. Right. It's still a great thing that people trust your art style and your skills to um, draw a character that they like but um, yeah so that's this challenge there in commissions especially because um, it's still fun drawing right. them but it's you know it's obviously or usually someone that you don't really imagine working on mm-hmm. uh, so that's the hard part but yeah right now Boku no Hero Academy is really 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 hot right now for me mm-hmm. yeah and there's this um, I don't know if you've seen her since you say you only watched like the first few episodes right there's this um, girl named To You and I, she's like my absolute, absolute favorite. So yeah, right now I've been just drawing her. Mm. Yeah, I um, I watched three episodes of the first season and I somehow lost interest. Maybe I need to keep watching. Oh, well, no, I mean, it happens. Like I used to have like, I used to have like the rule of thumb where like at least give each series like three episodes before I decide if it's like good or bad for me. Um, but yeah, that series, um, I got I got I got more to it with the first episode. I was like, I was like, okay, like okay, this is kind of cool, but I wasn't like committed to it. Then like after episode two, I was already like, okay, I'm gonna watch this like every time it comes out. So yeah, it just really depends. So, but yeah, I'm super super into it. Are you? Do you watch Hunter? X Hunter? I did. Oh my gosh. I'm rewatching. I I I saw the. I've watched the Chimera and arc. Oh but yeah. I watched it like a couple years ago, and a lot of it I totally forgot, which is nice. It's as if I'm watching it for the first time again. You know, like um, Hunter x Hunter, it's just something like you just keep rewatching because. Um, I'm always like complaining to my friends or um, my boyfriend like oh man like I haven't even watched the new series like what am I doing like I should try like watching and trying new series then like I go home I just rewatch Hunter x Hunter so I'm just like what am I doing (laughs) but it's so good it's so good and um, 
I don't know. I just really enjoy it. I think it's kind of sl- not slept on, but it's not as popular as the more obviously popular manga or anime like Bleach and Naruto. But, yeah. I mean, it's the storytelling. It's really good, and uh, yeah, I like it a lot. You know, it looks really cute. Like, oh, it's like a happy, cute little story about two boys. Like, then yeah. you watch it. It's really yeah. It it goes dark real real quick. It's very dark. Yeah. Um, you know the chimera and thing. The oh, it's pretty dark. And some of the powers some people have. I don't want to spoil anything, but I, yeah. I like that girl with the vacuum cleaner. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, sometimes, like, what becomes a weapon in that series, it's all, it's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, like, one of the things I always pay attention to just because I'm like, oh, what's, like, going to be, like, that bizarre weapon this time? Mm-hmm. And it's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, do you have any other animes you enjoy watching? Um, right now, right now, there's this series called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I like that. Awesome, yeah. So that, I'm like, I've always been super into. Um, uh, I don't know, which would like, which part's your favorite part? Because there's part one, part two, you know. I'm trying to think. I know, I think I've seen all of them. Um, I like the whole two, the 3D. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The mask, that, was that dude's mask? Dio, yeah. Yeah, I like, <coughs> I like those. But um, I, know, I, I like all of them in particular. It was just a very unique like art style I wasn't used yeah, to. Yeah, like, it's so unique. Is it like, is it supposed to be like exaggerated, like kind of a parody kind of thing? Um, yeah, like the exaggeration, that's like the beauty of mm-hmm. JoJo's Bizarre yeah. Adventure. Um, and they have these things called like amongst like the fandom it's like a thing like jojo poses is a thing because mm-hmm. like you know they didn't really like exaggerated like artsy yes. poses like obviously like <coughs> like anatomically like incorrect yeah. poses like yeah. impossible poses but yeah that's like a thing mm-hmm. so um i don't know i think that series just has a lot of culture just because it's so unique right. because yeah so like jojo poses it was one thing and then um the color scheme the creator araki he um, he always plays around with a lot of colors from what I see so um, I could imagine like when they were animating it they, it they had a hard time choosing like an official color mm. so you know like anime figures yeah yeah so like Jojo ones they have like figures of like the same model but they sell different versions they're like oh like the anime color version or like oh like Araki like the creators like um, colors so like they have the same exact figure but colored differently because he always like has different color schemes so then they have like oh this whatever like art book version color oh this like the anime version so yeah like his like his take on colors is really really interesting and like you know even in the anime like they try to adapt it a little because when something funky is happening or like someone's using their stand power or whatever mm-hmm. um, like the color scheme changes so like someone who has blonde hair suddenly has pink hair and Mm -hmm. like you know they play around with color a lot so it's so so unique um in the beginning i was like man like they look so like so masculine like they look buff like i don't know if like this is a series for me but Mm then um it's funny thing like my mom was the one that actually said you should watch it yeah (laughs) so so i was like you know what like you know i'll give it a try because mom told me like it's a good series then you know long behold i was super interested in it Mm -hmm. and um right now uh they only animate until part four but i i read it because i couldn't wait Mm -hmm. and Right now, I just really want um, JoJo's art book. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. but that's like the one series. Um, and then other than that, Boku no Hero. Um, Naruto, well, there's the sequel, Boruto. I actually haven't watched it yet. I saw one episode, and uh, I don't know. It just... It's uh, not the same. It's not. The, I mean, maybe because I'm expecting Naruto. Oh, like was Boruto, the but, older squad. Yeah, I mean... I just saw the characters, like, I just saw how everyone's kids look like, and I was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, um, I was, it was okay. I like the movie, though. Oh, really? I should, I should check it, it out. Uh, so, you mentioned earlier, you go to expos and you sell merchandise. How did you end up doing that? Like, what was it, what's the process of, one, 
tabling at an expo? Are there certain requirements? Do you need to like have some sort of, I don't know, fan base to do that? Um, yeah, you know, for, for tabling at conventions, um, as long as you have stuff to sell, anyone can really go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, for I'm just going to talk about Anime Expo specifically. Yeah. Like, each con kind of is slightly different. Right. Um, but in the end, like, the basic, like, the basis is you um, apply to get a table. Then they either get back to you and give you a table. Mm-hmm. You pay for it. And then, you know, you just prepare for a con. But um, for Anime Expo specifically... Um, it's really hard to get a table there. Um, it's super, super hard because the demand is so high. There's a right. lot of artists trying to table there. Mm-hmm. So what I... So for me, um, well, I started tabling with my table mate. She also does art. But, uh, she, like, we were just lucky enough to find a table like on our own like four years ago right but that was when i mean it was still hard to get but it wasn't as high in demand as it is now Mm -hmm. so the only reason why we're able to get a table is because they have um they have like a limited amount of openings for artists who's tabled before okay so we've just been like trying to access the table real quick and Mm -hmm. like getting the table is honestly the hardest part because when they when like a certain convention announces that they sell they're gonna sell or release the table at a certain time mm-hmm. all the artists like they're like this is what I do but I literally sit in front of my computer open like multiple windows or tabs and just keep refreshing until the until the table goes on sale and then like mm-hmm. I have to buy as fast as I can because anime Expo sold out in less than a minute yeah for like it, yeah for tables it's How crazy many tables are there? Um, you know, I'm actually not too sure. They oh, seem wow. to be, yeah, they seem to be, yeah, they seem to be um, making space for more year by year. But for some reason, it's always just, it always just sells out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like, you know, there's not really like a huge um, approval process necessarily where like you have to like send in a portfolio or anything because I guess to them it's like oh well if you lie to us that you that you have something to sell when you don't then you just lose your money so mm-hmm. you know why would you like try to buy a table if that's the case right. so you know like in, it's like for that part they just kind of like assume like well you're not you're not gonna waste your money obviously right. so right. you obviously have stuff to sell but um they still do ask for any links um if you have your work up just for reference mm-hmm. and um for me like i don't even have like a professional website like it's just i just literally send like my instagram or my tumblr mm-hmm. but you know like that's what works so like yeah. yeah it's not like a totally unapproachable thing mm-hmm. like in terms of like actually tabling there the right. most unapproachable thing is getting the actual table but like in terms of like the artwork itself um yeah usually it's okay um they have certain guidelines just like you know keep it like pg at most you know like things like that but um other than that you get your seller's permit but that's free as well so just get that make sure you're selling legally but Mm -hmm. you know it's super easy to get the seller's permit Mm -hmm. and then after you table you just pay your taxes and that's that's it really so find a table Mm -hmm. um, pay for it and then you just prepare your stuff and then you just sell at con yeah now i kind of want to go to anime expo just to go on your table (laughs) i've never been i've always wanted to go but uh i don't have too many friends that go to anime expo and also when i've Ever I go, there's always work. I can't take off. Oh, yeah. That's always... Yeah, for me, like, I always know I'm tabling. So, literally, a year before, I'm like, hey, like, these days, like, I can't. And, you know, if I say it a year before, then they're, you know, they can't say anything. So, so, yeah, I just, I'm like, look, I can't make it this day. And then, Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, okay, then. So, I'm like, yeah. That's cool. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I definitely want to check out Anime Expo. Um, I guess get your tickets early. I yeah, I always just like literally the day um, the con ends, I just get it because you can get it that early. Yeah, it's actually the cheapest because um, you know they do the thing where like the price goes up as mm-hmm. it gets closer to the actual con. So I think like I mean don't quote me on it, but like right before the con, like um, four day tickets are like eighty ninety plus, um, and then 
if you get it like right after con then it's like 60 or 70 okay. so yeah and then they also have black friday sales so even if you're a little late to like jump on the game mm-hmm. like their black friday sales like kind of um, takes it back to that like 60 70 range mm-hmm. so you know people still have chances hmm sounds enticing um so this is going to be more a heavier aspect of uh this conversation <laughs> As a Japanese American who's obviously into this culture, um, can you talk to us about prob- the problematic issues within anime slash anime culture that you have seen and witnessed or just have noticed? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that I can talk about. I probably might not even mention everything because yeah, I don't basics. know. But yeah. Um, first, what, what is this term? I don't know if it's like a derogatory term, like a weeaboo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear it yeah. often. Yeah, it's just, um, if you want to put it in like in a fancy way, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of like culturally appropriating Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, some people, like, they don't do it as like heavily or anything, mm-hmm. but um, it's just... I guess, like, it's just kind of, like, another, like, people now use it casually for, like, people, like, who just, like, think that they're Japanese or Mm -hmm. whatever, yeah, or, like, they just like anime. I mean, even I use it, like, just, like, like, between my friends, Mm -hmm. like, just, like, a joke, like, oh, man, you're such a weeb, but they're just, like, talking about how much they like a series, and, like, that's, like, the casual side, but, like, um, like, in serious, like, terms, the word weeaboo is just, like, yeah, it's a derogatory way of saying, like, oh, like, you like anime, you're just thinking, like, you're Japanese just because you like anime. And, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, like, the huge misconception is that if you watch anime, like, you know everything about Japan, and that's totally not the case because, I mean, yeah, like, there are some shows that um, kind of reflect, uh, like, the actual, like, current life, like, city life or whatever Mm -hmm. in Japan but you know in the end it's a fictional work and in the like I for me like I think that because I know like how actual like landscapes and cityscapes look like it's easier for me to appreciate it because for me um I'm watching the cities that portrays Japan because I already like you know because I grew up as like a Japanese American so I know the parts that they're trying to show Mm -hmm. but for other people who don't know who's never been to Japan or you know who are obviously like who didn't have like a Japanese slash Japanese American upbringing um you know everything's new to them and then this is like what they see on like an anime show is what they're absorbing so then they're like oh like so this is how Japan's like Mm. because for me I'm like oh yeah like I already know how Japan's like then I watch I'm like oh yeah that's like pretty similar that's cool so like I still like accept it as like not a parody but like obviously it's not the actual thing Mm. like I'll just if it's super accurate I get to appreciate how accurate it is but then for other people like they just take that like um, recreation of mm-hmm. what is close to real and then they're like oh that's that's Japan mm-hmm. so I think that's like the first like yeah like anime it's not necessarily Japan like of, um, right now um, there's actually not I would say um, a social issue mm-hmm. it's called cool Japan um, it sounds cool because obviously there's the word cool in there right, but right. Um, so basically what that is is um so Japan, they just want to um, sell globally and like appeal to tourists, and um, so they know that their culture is unique, just like every other culture. So, what Cool Japan is specifically is they are trying to um, market their culture more, mm-hmm. and um, so amongst Japanese people, there's kind of a divide where some people are like, "Hey." Um, that's that's really good that we get to emphasize our culture put it out there a lot more people will know about our stuff and then the other side the other side of the spectrum is oh hey like you're kind of just like um objectifying our culture Mm -hmm. and just like trying to make it into merchandise um so that's the two sides of it um i personally um so the thing with cool japan is right now there's a lot of like japanese like markets selling 
anime and being like, oh yeah, we have anime, we have anime, we have anime, and they're like jumping on that like mm-hmm. trend too. So then, so then like consumers, like especially overseas consumers, if Japan themselves is like selling anime a lot, then they're just gonna be like, oh yeah, Japan's like only anime. So that's like the bad thing. Like that's like the unfortunate part where.、Um, Like they like Japan sells their culture, but、mm-hmm. then like that's where also the misconception happens that、um, Japan's only anime. Right. Yeah. Because I, I, I guess to someone who doesn't know much about Japanese culture, I mean, there's definitely a big difference from animated, it's portrayed, it's animated, it's fictional、mm-hmm. to the actual going on of Japanese culture. I mean. I guess one could mistake, and if they don't know, they can mistake the artwork of it for like, oh, that that must be how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's like it's really it's a hard <coughs> thing to really have an opinion on because、mm-hmm. I、um, I personally think using anime as a gateway to introduce Japanese culture,、mm-hmm. I think it's actually. Great, like、yeah. I actually think it's good,、right. but a lot of people tend to just kind of go in a bad direction with it.、Yeah. They just kind of think like, oh, like I watched anime, like I know Japan.、Yeah. So I really think like it's a great like gateway, like first step into like wanting to know Japanese culture、mm-hmm. because of course it's like one of the most approachable ways to experience or maybe not next necessarily、right. experience, but like. Take a look into Japanese culture, so I think it's good to like introduce it. And you know, if you're just an anime fan, that's fine.、Yeah. But then, if you're just an anime fan, but you kind of claim that you like Japanese culture, I guess that's a little that's like teeter tottery. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, do you really? Because you like, you know, if you just watch anime, but you're claiming that, well, then that makes you a obio boo. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Because I've always heard that.、Um, That term, I mean, like, there's also that term otaku, right?、Mm-hmm. If you're really into something, it doesn't have to be necessarily anime.、Mm-hmm, right. Yeah. yeah.、Um, I think the word otaku、um, in America it became just like a term to identify yourself as an anime lover.、Mm-hmm. But yeah,、um, like you said, in actual Japanese language, otaku just means something like like someone who's really into something. So、mm-hmm. there's different kind of otaku's, obviously, right, like. Right. Um, so there's like train otaku's who really likes like the train models,、mm-hmm. and then there's you know like you could be an otaku about anything. So、gotcha. like you could love anything, but <coughs> in America it's、mm-hmm. become a term to describe people who like anime.、Mm-hmm. But then、um, it's actually、um, if you describe someone who likes anime as an otaku in Japan, that's kind of that's derogatory.、Mm-hmm. So it's not here. Over here it's like a Identif- like a term to identify yourself, like oh, I'm an otaku, like、mm-hmm. I like anime.、Right. So then, I guess that's why the word weeaboo was created、mm-hmm. because that's what like that like the connotation of the word weeaboo. That's basically what the word otaku has in Japan, like、mm-hmm. a negative like oh, like you just like anime type、right. of thing. Yeah, because I had a discussion with a friend a couple weeks ago. Like you know, you have non Japanese who. Are like just saying these random sayings in anime in real life, like waifu、mm. and oh yeah yeah, you know、oh, <coughs> the, the cringe, <laughs> you know that、yeah. just really taking anime into real life. Just I don't know, how to, you know they dress. I'm mean, nothing wrong with dressing like you know cosplay, yeah, whatnot, yeah. But I guess it's when you, there's a time and place for things. Right. But when you just like straight up just I don't know. Like like let's say like this like a person a male, young male just watching anime and just no observes it, Asian women or Japanese or just like women they show they're super submissive and、mm-hmm. you know like they're sexual deviants and like I guess the issue lies when 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 they think oh all Asian girls are like that. Oh yeah yeah totally yeah. um yeah like the sexualization of women in anime. Um, that like for me like as a Japanese American like having that like perspective, it's really hard.、Um, not for me to go against it because I do think it's wrong,、mm-hmm. but、um, I also like want people to understand that like originally like um, um, originally a long time ago like 
the very first like origin of anime was um, Tezuka Osamu. He like drew mangas of um, like Doraemon. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was like he was originally inspired like Walt Disney and stuff, mm-hmm. and you know. But then, um, so the original like anime it looks like cartoon. So <coughs> you know, anime came a long way to be what it is now. Mm-hmm. It's totally to, like the original, like what Tezuka Osamu did. He like it's totally different. Right. And then what I also want people to understand is that right now, um, we're currently um, in America. There was like the baby boomer era, but in Japan right now, um, there's high, there's like significantly more um, men in Japan, mm-hmm. and there's less and less youth and more and more senior and older Mm -hmm. citizens and that's because um there's a lack of like fam like there's no like um will for people over there to marry Mm -hmm. and there's um there's a lot of single men so i want people to understand that there's a lot more men and Mm -hmm. in a business perspective a lot of people are saying oh we need to make anime that appeal to men because there's more men Mm -hmm. and then that's kind of how um, more like anime catered to like a like a stereotypical like anime catered to men with like all the cute girls and all that happened so you know like a lot of people don't know that so now you know they're just like a lot some people are just like oh like oh anime creators are just um, doing whatever and um, like making like all these cute girls and whatever objectifying blah 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 mm-hmm. but yeah like the real like what people don't know is there's a lot more men in Japan because right. so um, that's probably why like it ended up happening that mm-hmm. now there's just a lot more anime catered to men um, and they are doing better on that like there's mm-hmm. more like anime like not just like cute girls mm-hmm. yeah um and there are some like that are supposed to be like catered to women Mm -hmm. but like with that too like right now they're still working on improving that situation so Mm -hmm. you'll see like an anime that's supposed to be catered to men are like super well animated super well funded Mm -hmm. like it looks super nice and then Mm -hmm. like anime catered to women like low funding so animation's (coughs) choppy Mm -hmm. low quality so they're still working on that right, but right. you know now there's more shows happening where you know they're like supposed to be supposed to be for women i mean mm. in the end anyone can enjoy anything right. but yeah like from like the creator's point of view like what they're aiming for like the audience that they're aiming for there's more that are there's more and more now that yeah. are meant for a woman so you know like it's it's they're working on it mm. it's happening yeah i mean the first anime i saw that was I, I feel like it was targeted towards females, but not only females, but mainly targeted was Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I really, I was my uncle even made fun of me for watching that. When oh, I was younger. but it's so awesome! But it's really, I liked it. I ended up getting a Sailor Venus tattoo. <coughs> but uh, it, it was really good. I liked it, and I think there's more of those coming out. I think. I mean, have you heard of Claymore? Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that one. That's yeah, it's awesome. All female lead, very violent. Um, yeah, like no, that. like, not fruity, yeah. like, accidental, like, nip slip type yeah. of things. No, yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty intense. Yeah. And I know there's a lot more female uh, leads, female roles. I mean, I know Sword Art Online. Like, there's some pretty powerful female characters. Yeah, um, I totally agree. Like, with Sailor Moon specifically, like, so even if they made um, anime targeted towards women, like, see, like, Sailor Moon, like, it was, like, for little girls mm-hmm. and like younger like children and they never made um anime meant like targeted towards women like grown women versus Mm -hmm. there being a lot for grown men Mm -hmm. so like that would that's kind of like the like the difference there that you know there's more there's just more males so they just make more stuff for um men Mm -hmm. um the other like the funny thing is there's this animation company called Kyoto Animation. Mm-hmm. They made like um, they made I'm blinking out, but um, they made like Free. They made Tamako Market. They made K-On. Mm-hmm. Um, if any of you guys know that, um, 
Um, they also made like uh, Haruhi Suzumiya, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. They're all like really big titles, but mm -hmm. Kyoto Animation, they're well known for being super, like they make super pretty animation. Um, another favorite they made is um, Nichijo, but, um, or, and Lucky Star. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so they're well known for really nice, high quality animation. But they've always made stuff catered to men. And then one summer, they just decided, you know, let's make, let's make an anime like more catered more to women. So that's free. That's the mm -hmm. swimming anime. So, so it's actually funny because when Kyoto Animation announced free, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of male, like a lot of men in Japan, they were. Um, expecting their token like swimsuit babe mm. whatever anime from Kyoto Animation yeah. then they announced free like which is just like a bunch of guys swimming so they're like this isn't what we want to see so there was actually like a lot of like internet drama of like yeah. a lot of men just like hating on free they're like oh it's gonna be stupid blah 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 mm. so um, I think that's interesting you know like you know like when a really popular animation series are they're gonna they decide to be like hey we're gonna be, we're gonna try to change it up a little. Mm -hmm. Then the male audience is like, hey, this isn't what we like. Right, right. So, right. you know, like, um, I actually like telling that to a lot of um, free fans. Like, mm -hmm. when I when they come to my workplace mm -hmm. and they look for, like, anime stuff, um, I kind of like to tell them, like, oh, hey, did you know, like, that free kind of came a long way before it's like popularity because it got a lot of hate mm -hmm. from men in japan but now like men also watch it and they're like oh you know the animation's still good you know kyoto animation's still doing his job mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah so i actually like talking about that that's cool that's yeah. a very good perspective of it i gotta check that out um have you come across any copyright issues when you do fan art um no, not me personally, um, but there's a lot of issues about that going on, especially right now because there's the trend of like enamel pins and mm -hmm. like slaps, like car slaps, like car stickers, mm -hmm. like bumper stickers basically. I see a bunch of Hello Kitty stuff, Hello Kitty stickers, but I doubt it's all Sanrio licensed. Oh yeah, yeah, so kind of like that, a lot of people are making like anime versions. Um, so me personally, I've never like come across that problem because one, I don't like copy and paste an official art or I don't trace it. Mm -hmm. And then two, like, um, like the biggest thing is um, I can't really, not all artists can do this like openly, but we just, we, we don't claim that those characters are ours. Like mm -hmm. it's not our original, like, mm -hmm. and everybody who buys it knows that too. They're like, oh, it's just an artist that drew this character from so-and-so and like, you know, so like. Um, yeah, so me personally, no, but there's a lot of drama going on, like, in the artist slash, like, um, mer like art merchandise community, because um, a lot of, like, enamel pins, mm -hmm. um, which I think they're cute. Those are probably, but, those are the pins that everyone's wearing on their backpacks. Yeah, like, like the they're backpacks, wearing. they're, like, denim jackets, <coughs> like, yeah. caps, yep, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So they have, um, so right now, a lot of people are making enamel pins of, like, like manga caps like manga captions so mm -hmm. if there's like a scene where Sailor Moon says like in the name of the moon I'll punish you mm -hmm. like they make that like pose like into an enamel pin mm -hmm. so you know like that's a cute idea right. so people are like oh that's so cute and they buy it but then the real problem is that like you know they didn't think of that like mm -hmm. the people who made it like they they thought that that like if they cut that scene out and make it into a product it would be really cute so and it's true it is cute mm -hmm. but in terms of like copyrights it's actually like i personally don't think it's a good thing mm -hmm. so you know it's hard because i explain how like fan art is a way to like experience what um you don't um what the official company doesn't give you right but um, as hard as it is, I think it's also really um, good or better to, and I think a good way to respect the series is to not make those kind of things because it's really cool like having like a specific scene of a show being put into a sticker because mm -hmm. like say it's your favorite scene or it's an iconic scene and like having it put into a sticker or a pin, that's awesome. But like the idea itself is really cool mm -hmm. but in the end um you know i think it's okay for personal use like if you just say like if you just think oh you know what i think this thing as a sticker would be really cute i'm just gonna make it for myself then you know what like 
do that like do like whatever to like enjoy your stuff personally right. but people you know they sell it they make they mass produce it, and then they're like oh hey like my pins are out my stickers mm-hmm. are out and um you know like even i sometimes like really want them because the idea is so cute like um like there's this like um pin like where like i won't say who but mm-hmm. there's like a pin of sailor moon saying like oh i'm so hungry and like you know it's so cute like i'm like oh that'd be really cute mm-hmm. but it is just like a like a screen cap of a scene from an anime so you know i'm like oh well i shouldn't get it so that's the problem they um instead of like recreating something of something that already exists they just literally copy it so then you know it's a cute idea but it's not a good thing wow. to do so for me like i have a lot of like ideas like that too like oh if if this whatever icon that came out in the show became a sticker that'd be cute but um you know like if it's just that like if i'm just going to take the icon that's not right and mm-hmm. for me like as um an artist like who creates things like i don't want to take something else and just right. call that as my own because that I mean that that hurts me too. Like maybe like say I do make money, but like in the end I'm gonna feel guilty. Like oh wait, like this isn't what I made. Mm-hmm. So, but you know like the people who make those pins and like slaps, they don't think that like they're taking it. So that's right. like the divide in the community of like of um, the artists. Like there's like the side that's like well you know like they're digitizing it, so technically that counts as creating. Mm-hmm. And then there's a the side that's like well you are digitizing it, but you're just copying so in the end it's not really like your work yeah i want to say with that too there's two thoughts to it i want to think (coughs) like well sailor moon's making so much money how much how much can i hurt that entity right you know like i don't know i mean they're sailor moon's been out for 20 plus years here i am making my own like diy enamel pins Mm -hmm. like how much how much can i really hurt them Mm, you know that's true but on the same aspect that you're saying as an artist who creates her own work there's a moral dilemma you have ethics yes yeah hey you know i wouldn't want someone doing that to my work you know let's say make some cool fan art or make an original and it's so cool but then people start copying it (coughs) and like making profit off your money i wouldn't feel very happy either yeah yeah totally so there's that there's that yeah so I guess it uh, depends mm -hmm. yeah like with Sailor Moon totally a big franchise now so I'm sure that's probably why Sailor Moon hasn't even and Dragon Ball like there's a lot of like enamel pins on like Dragon Ball too like that's probably why they haven't been like hey you guys don't Mm -hmm. do it because they're just like oh you know like let them be but yeah like yeah, like if this, if there were to be a smaller series, or if someone like ripped off a lot, of, like ripped off like an art idea, like mm-hmm. I mean, right now there's already there's also a problem with like fast fashion, like Forever Twenty One. Nice yeah, mm-hmm. and they have like accessories now, like they have enamel pins, they have like mm-hmm. badges and stuff, and they have like tote bags that mm-hmm. say like funny snarky comments right. and stuff. Like a lot of those come from artists too, mm-hmm. so. You know, like, so that's, like, not a good thing. Right. Yeah. So I know that Urban Outfitters is notorious for doing mm-hmm. that. They take whatever is kind of popping and they make their own. And the Hot original artists, yeah, yeah, they don't see they don't see any money towards it. Because, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, like, I, I go to a uh, hot, not hot topic, but, like, you go to Forever 21 or H&M, you see Nirvana shirts. I highly doubt Nirvana mm-hmm. is making money yeah, off of those totally. shirts. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, I, I get, I see both sides of the coin and, you know, I think as an artist, you have a really good integrity, you know, if I was an artist too, I probably wouldn't get it if it's like, you know. Yeah, cause you know, it's hard, like, cause the idea it is cool. cute. Oh, yeah. yeah, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I no, no, yeah, it. totally. Like, so th- <coughs> that's the hard part. It's like, oh, it is cute. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, I know it's bad. So right. like, I don't want to support like not the original artist. Right. So. I mean, at the same time too, is that like. The consumer knows that they didn't draw Sailor Moon. Yeah. The, I mean, one one way to look at it, like it's making it more mainstream, but at the same time, the principle is is that it's not yours, and you're yeah. making money off it. It's like if someone like I don't know took my vocals without my permission and started making money off it. Yeah, I'd like if they did like a remix, you know, yeah. they're like, oh yeah, this is my, <coughs> yeah. you know. Um, 
But yeah, that, those are very interesting points. I never saw it from an artist's point of view. I mean, it might sound a little contradicting, but I do no. want to like differentiate like the fan art. Like you at least like you make, make it. Yeah, you're not create. you're not drawing. Yeah, you're like interpreting something. Right. Like you remake it, and mm. then like what I'm talking about is like taking something already existing and just literally like making that into a product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gray area, really, though. It, it, it's tough. I mean, with digital stuff nowadays, a lot, I see a lot of um, t-shirt companies getting ripped off, like Redbubble. Oh, right? yeah. You can just, like, find a picture, and you just, like, send it, upload it to that site. Yeah, and then you, order you make money if you yeah. just do that. Yeah. Because, you know, people see it, and they're like, oh, like, that's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it probably is, but mm -hmm. it's also really, like, not good copyright-wise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so where can we find you on social media? Um, so we talked about it earlier, mm -hmm. but I'm always on Instagram. Um, my um, artist name I go as is Mochi Jam. So okay. at Mochi Jam, that's M-O-C-H-I-J-A-M. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then where are you on Twitch? Twitch, um, same thing. Like I make everything Mochi Jam, so I find like I make myself very accessible. Like awesome. I, I just make like I just hope um, people remember my name and that oh, they we'll could say, just we'll start out, yeah. yeah. So yeah. so yeah, no, like um, no, I just hope that people remember my name because then once they do, like I, I just make everything the same because like cool. the only thing though is that my Twitter is at Mochi Jam with like an extra M at the mm -hmm. end because Mochi Jam was taken. Ooh, who is Mochi Jam? Yeah, I know. And like, they didn't post anything. Like, they just have an account there. So yeah, I, I those people. So I tried contacting Twitter and I was like, hey, like, I really want this name. And I found that it's already existing. I mm -hmm. went to their profile and it's not that it's on private. Like, it's public and there's nothing there. So I'm like, oh, like, I was wondering, like, you could check that out, but I never got a response. So that's oh. why I'm just kind of dealing with Mochi Jam. One extra M, cool. but yeah, Mochi Jam. Um, that too, like that's just my last name and my initials slapped together. Mochi mm -hmm. coming from Mochizuki, my last name, mm -hmm. and then Jam J A M. That's my initials. Jasmine Alisa, which is my Japanese name. Whoa. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> and then M, you know, for Mochizuki. So then I was like, oh, Mochi Jam kind of sounds catchy. That's kind of cool. And then like it's like it's my own name. Yeah. People just. Like, they don't know about it. A lot of people probably are like, oh, Mochi, like, that's not a real name. But, you know, like, my name, my last name is Mochizuki. It's, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, like, yeah, that's just, like, a little backstory. I just wanted to say it because um, my friend, like, he didn't, I was talking to him. He's like, hey, so, like, what is, like, what is Mochi Jam anyway? So, like, I wanted to explain it because he's like, oh, I get it's your name. <laughs> I didn't feel like it was your name. I feel like Mochizuki, Mochi. And yeah, but then, like, you're like, where's the jam? Like, I thought the Jasmine name? was, like... It was short for Jasmine. Oh, yeah, an yeah, M yeah. And an J and an A. Yeah, you just kind of like figure, yeah, yeah, like it's somehow like related <coughs> to a name. But yeah, yeah the A is um, for my middle name, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that was a great episode. I'll see y'all later. Thank you.